Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Walat. And after bringing questions from every genre, I thought now let's do a mixed bag. Fifth is your exam, today is second. And I know you know a lot, you're familiar with the course. You're not starting from point zero at this point, right? So please be brave, go select the questions which are easy for you right now and then come back to the difficult ones. Don't think of the difficult ones as your enemy. Just try to solve them, be calm, stay hydrated and you'll do so well. Now from today, today and tomorrow, I thought I'll get a mixed bag of questions, which means from every area I will bring questions, okay? So it's gonna be like a mega revision. Are you ready? Yes, you are. Question number one on your screen. These three questions are from British literature, upcoming three. Arrange the plays of William Shakespeare in the chronological order of the year of their publication. Just tell me the chronology of Shakespeare's plays. The names of the plays are The Tempest, Love's Labour's Lost, Twelfth Night, Much Ado About Nothing, and A Midsummer Night's Dream. Come on, we'll quickly move on to the answer. The correct answer is B E D C A. Love's Labour's Lost came first, followed by A Midsummer Night's Dream, followed by Much Ado About Nothing, followed by Twelfth Night followed by The Tempest. Okay, easy. So the earliest one was, remember it like this, Love's Labour is Lost. And the last one was The Tempest. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Here are these lines you have to tell me from which text are they taken. Quote, of all the causes which conspire to blind man's erring judgment and misguide the mind, what the weak head with strongest bias rules is pride, the never failing vice of fools. These lines are taken from an essay on criticism of all the causes which conspire to blind. Okay, is pride, the never failing vice of fools. So an essay on criticism. Nice. Let's move on to the third question. Tell me the famous diarist from the following. Who among the following was a famous diarist? A. John Evelyn, B. John Bunyan, C. Earl of Rochester, or D. Robert Walker? The famous diarist is A. John Evelyn. Do you want to know other early diarists? Look at them here. Roger Love, followed by Sir John Reresby, followed by Ralph Thorisby, followed by, followed by Ralph Jocelyn, followed by Narcissus Lutteral. Listen, you know everything. Now is the time to feel confident and not to look confused. Okay? Come, American literature questions on your screen now. Who among the following is the author of the no novel titled Type A Peep at Polynesian Life? Just tell me the author of Type A Peep at Polynesian Life. It is option B, Herman Melville. Melville wrote A Peep at Polynesian Life. Question number five, Langston Hughes' poem, I Too Sing America, is a response to which of the following poets? Basically, Hughes composed his poem, I Too Sing America, in response to A. Herman Melville, B. Walt Whitman, C. H. D. Thoreau, or D. Emily Dickinson. Hughes wrote, I Too Sing America, in response to Walt Whitman. Correct answer is B. Walt Whitman. Come to question number six, everyone. Chronology. Please tell me the correct chronological sequence of periods of American literature. Okay, we have to sort the periods of American literature chronologically. Should I tell you the answer? Look, first came revolutionary period, followed by early national period, followed by romantic period in America, also called as age of transcendentalism followed by realistic period, followed by naturalistic period. Will you remember this? So the earliest period will be revolutionary and the latest will be naturalistic. In between will be the other three, right? Come to the questions based on post-colonial literature now, everyone. Question number seven, it's matched the following. You have to tell me the writers and their works. The writers are Vikram Seth, V.S. Naipaul, Salman Rushdie and Jhumpa Lahiri. Please arrange them 
match the following actually, match them with their works, these post-colonial writers. I'll give you the answer. Vikram Seth is the writer of From Heaven Lake. Okay, From Heaven Lake is by Vikram Seth. V.S. Naipaul wrote The Mosque of Africa. So connect Naipaul with The Mosque. Followed by Salman Rushdie who wrote Knife. Rushdie wrote Knife. And last is Jhumpa Lahiri, the writer of The Lowland. So The Lowland is written by Jhumpa Lahiri. Let's move on to next question. Easy. Come on, take a deep breath. It's all easy. You know it. Next question from post-colonial literature. Which of the following writers pioneered the Australian Aboriginal movement? Who is the pioneer of Australian Aboriginal movement? The correct answer is Kevin Gilbert, Odguru Nonukul and Jack Davis. So who pioneered Australian Aboriginal movement? Everybody tell me. Kevin Gilbert, Nunakal and Jack Davis. Actually, his name is like a tongue twister. No, Udguru Nunukal. <laughs> Come now, next question from PC Literature. Which writer said, you are, you are your best thing? I'm also saying this to you. You are your best thing. Who, who said this? You are your best thing? These lines were said by Toni Morrison in Beloved. Toni Morrison in Beloved said, you are your best thing. Next questions are from Research Methodology. Everyone look here on the screens. I know I'm not boring you. I know these questions. I'm just giving you a flow of exam now. You know, these are PYQs, obviously. Previous year questions. But now I'm giving you the flow of the exam. How you will fall into one area, another area. It's like that now, right? Come on, questions from research methodology on your screen. Which of the following are correct according to the MLA Handbook 9th edition? Five statements have been given. You have to tell me the correct statements according to the MLA Handbook 9th edition. I'll give you the correct statements, A, C and D. According to MLA Handbook 9th edition, one inch margin on all sides is compulsory in a research page. Okay, then. Slash is used between two nouns paired as opposites. Slash is used between two nouns paired as opposites. Next good thing for MLA Handbook 9th edition is hanging indent in the work cited entry is half inches. Should I remember? Hanging indent in the work cited entry is half inches. These three statements A, C and D are correct. B and E are not right. Okay, let's move on to question number 11. 1111, lucky lucky number. Which of the following options are true about the epistemological dimension of research? Tell me the options which are right about the epistemological dimension of research. The correct answer is B and D, which means the search for truth and D is Certain and indubitable knowledge. Certain and indubitable knowledge. Look here now. The epistemological dimension of research refers to the philosophical assumptions about knowledge that underpin a research project. What is epistemological dimension? The philosophical assumptions about knowledge that underpin a research project. So the search for truth is right and certain knowledge, indubitable knowledge is right. Okay, about epistemological dimension of research. Let's come to question number 12 now. A structured interview consists of? A structured interview consists of? A, a series of predetermined questions. Because it is structured, so predetermined. Easy? Come now, let's discuss about questions from European literature on the screen. Question number 13. Which of these countries does Montaigne's essay of cannibals focus on primarily? Montaigne's essay is on cannibals. You have to tell me which country does it deal with? The correct answer will be option number two, Brazil. So Montaigne's essay on cannibal focuses on Brazil. Come to the next question. I'm hiding the screen. See now, can you see it? I made it small. 
What term did Bertolt Brecht use for his mode of drama writing to distinguish it from traditional theatre? Bertolt Brecht used the term epic theatre. Bertolt Brecht used the term epic theatre. Okay, this mode of drama writing to distinguish it from traditional theatre. Right? Come to question number 15 now. Herman Hesse Siddharth was originally written in Herman Hesse Siddharth was originally written in option for German. And now come to Indian literature, everyone. Indian literature, come on now. Who is the author of English in India? It's present and future. The author of English in, in, in India, it's present and future is, tell me, it is option C, V. K. Gokak. English in India, Present and Future was published in 1964 and it was written by V. K. Gokak. Come to question number 17. It talks about Macaulay's 1835 minutes on Indian education. The question says, which of these did Macaulay's 1835 minutes on Indian education wanted to create? The correct answer obviously has to be a class of people, Indian by blood, but English by taste. That is what Macaulay wanted, right? Developing English universities, giving a lot of funds to English education, right? A class of people, Indian in blood, but English by taste. And come to the last question of the day. These lines, quote, my man, my sons forming the axis, while I, wife and mother, insignificant as a fly, climbed the glass pane of their eyes. Identify the poem written by Kamla Das from which the above lines have been taken. My, son, my man, my sons forming the axis while I, wife and mother, insignificant as a fly, climbed the glass pane of their eyes. The correct answer is option D, a widow's lament. A widow's lament and we are done. You'll do so good. God bless you. We all are with you. Team Walat is with you. You are with you, right? You believe in yourself and that is why you can do it. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself. This is Hina from Team Walat.